What is up guys? Fahir here from AwesomeDudes.com and I have a huge announcement for you. In my most popular course, you will learn how to create RPG and first-person shooter multiplayer games. And you can get that course at a huge discount. And this is not the best part. The best part is that I have created a special coupon code and when you use it to enroll in the course, you will automatically be enrolled in my giveaway competition and you will get a chance to win some cool prizes. What are those prizes? Well, first place is gonna get a 15 inch MacBook Pro. Second place is gonna get an iMac 27 inch with Retina 5K display. And third place is gonna get a 13 inch MacBook Pro. All you have to do to enroll in this competition is enroll in the course and link to it is in the description below. You will also find another link to the video where I explain about the giveaway competition in more depth. In short, I will record myself drawing the winners and sending them their prizes depending on which places they are or they win first, second or third. So we'll see me sending these MacBook Pros and you will see me announcing the winners and I will post that on my YouTube channel. So again, first prize will win a 15 inch MacBook Pro. Second prize is 27 inch iMac with 5K Retina display. And third place is 13 inch MacBook Pro. What is up guys, Fahir here from awesometudes.com and now that we have our obstacles moving, let us add our player in the game. Now before we do that, inside of this assets folder, we have the player, enemies and obstacles and backgrounds and buttons. We can create a new folder here, so I'm gonna name this one to sprites and select player, enemies and obstacles, backgrounds and buttons and put all of this inside of that sprites folder just so that we group our sprites right here in one place. So if we go here inside of our player folder, first sprites then player, we have these player animations here. So we have the run animation, jumping animation and fall down which is his dead animation. What we need to do is create a new animation for the player. Before that, in the animations folder, I'm gonna right click and create a new folder. This is gonna be player animations and here is where we are gonna put the player animations. So sprites, player, select the run animation, this one right here, and we'll drag and drop all four of these. So one, two, three, four, and drag and drop them right here in the scene view. And now when we do that, bam, this pop-up window pops up asking us to create an animation because we added four or selected four images. And we're gonna select animations folder, player animation, and here I'm gonna call this one run right and hit enter to save. This is gonna be our run right animation for the player. Why run right? Well, we'll see that in a second. First, I'm gonna rename this game object to player. He is too big for our game as we see right here, so we need to, well, resize him. Select the player, scale on the X is 0.2, on the Y point two, on the Z point two. Here I'm gonna say 2 for the X axis and negative 1 on the Y axis. This is where we are gonna put our player. So this right here and let me also take the player and change his Z position. Let's say Z is gonna be a negative 4 just so that our player is visible on top of the obstacle. If I hit the run button now, notice what we have. Our player is running on the obstacle. Before we proceed with the animations, because we need to well prepare these animations for our player, we are gonna click here under Add Component, Filter for Box Collider 2D, and voila, here is our player. So we have the Box Collider here, and I'm gonna resize it because as you can see, you see this right here, this is not how we want it. So I'm gonna set the size on the X at 2.98, size on the Y, let's say 5.9, and offset it on the x-axis by 1.34. So this is what we have for our box collider. Voila! Let me just put the player back here at 2 for the x and we need to add a rigid body as I already said for our player because we will be moving him and he has a box collider and filter for rigid body 2D. We need to make it to be kinematic because if we leave it like this now, bam, you see the player fell down, which is not what we want. So 
select the body type here, drop down list and click on kinematic. And we are done or good to go. Going back into the assets folder in the project, right click, create a new folder for prefabs and inside of the prefabs folder, go right here, right click, create folder player prefabs, not playfabs, prefabs like this and voila, here we are. Drag and drop the player here because it's a good idea to create prefabs out of game objects that you need because a prefab is a reusable game object. If I drag and drop the player right here, here we have another player. And all of the features or all of the settings that we had for this player, now this prefab also has. And when we change something on our player, this one right here, we can hit apply at the top right corner so that that change also will apply to the prefab. Before we proceed with some scripting, we need to go here in animation, select the player himself and create a new animation. We know that when we want to create a new animation, if I select the tree, we have this create button and I click create and then we can select where we want to save that animation, blah, blah, blah. But when we select the player now, we don't have that. The reason for it is because the player has his animations, he has his controller and animator component attached on him. So in order to create a new animation, right below the red recording button, we have this drop down list and we can click on it and we can click here, create new clip. This is gonna be our jump animation. Now, since we are on the right side right here, we are gonna jump from right to left. So here I'm gonna create a new clip and I'm gonna call this one jump left animation and save it assets animations, player animations, and click save. What we need to do is put this animator tab right here, go into the sprites player folder, and we have these jump cycles. So we have four of them. Drag and drop them and put them right here. And here they are. Let me just zoom in a little bit, zoom in a little bit more. And voila, here they are. Now, I don't want them to be right here, right next to each other, because like that, notice here, this is the animation now that we have. This is our jump left. You see the player is like crazy and we do not want that. So we are gonna take these keyframes. So take these three keyframes and move them like this. And let's go on, key on frame 15. So let me just move these keyframes a little bit more. On frame 15, this one right here, drag these two or the first two keyframes. So these two, drag them on frame 15. We're also gonna go on frame 30 and you see where this is going. So here we have frame 30, this one right here. Let me just take two keyframes and put this on frame 30 and frame, well, 45 put these two keyframes. Actually, we can move these a little bit, something like this, so that I can put this on keyframe or these keyframes, something like this. So first two keyframes, you see, they are gonna be on frame 15. Next two on, K on frame 30, then frame 45. So these two need to be on frame 45. And these two are on frame 60 because our animation looks a little bit better now. You see here, our animation looks a little bit better. Don't worry about the animation being slow. We will speed it up in the animator panel. So we will speed it up. So don't worry about that. But the important thing is that we have created that animation. Now, as you can see, our animation is not that good. You see, the player is very small. When we stop the animation, this is the player's normal size and whatnot. So in order for us to begin the scripting, we need to fix these animations because we are not gonna use some code that's gonna put our player from this position to this position. Instead, we're gonna use all animation. So we will animate the player running on the right side, then animate the player running on the left side and animating the player jumping from left to right and vice versa from right to left. So what we also need to do is go in the run animation, run right. I called it run right for a reason because we need to hit the preview or actually the recording key. We need to hit it, change the X like this, change it to any value. So X position, change it to any value and now put it on two. 
and go on the last frame, this one right here, and again, put it onto your, actually change it just so that we record. When I say change, we need to record so that we record this keyframe. So we need to have these keyframes. As you can see now, we have our player sprite position, but put it again at two. Why at two? Because this is the player's running right animation, as you can see right here. So we have him running on the right side because we are also gonna have him running on the left side. And in order to have him running on the left side, we need to select the player, go in the animator, select the run right and duplicate it. Not jump left, duplicate the run right animation. So here it is. And now take the run right animation, rename it from run right zero to run left and hit enter and bam, save this. Select the player again, go into the animation tab and now we have, so we should actually have another animation. No, we don't. So we need to improvise and go back here, delete this one and create a new animation. I thought this is gonna work. So create a new animation clip and this is gonna be our run right because or actually run left so run left and again we need to drag and drop our animation so go here we have running animations these here and let me just go here and see where they are let me compare them with the running right so yeah they go from well zero up to three frames so this is okay and this one right here run left does the same exact thing so it does the same the same exact thing but what we need to do is the following hit the recording button so hit the recording because now we need to well run on the left side which means that our player needs to be on negative two you see right here and also negative 0 0.2 on his scale and we need to go here on the last frame and just change the position just so notice here notice we don't have keyframes right here but if I change the position bam you see we have keyframes right away so put it at negative 2 and also change the scale just a little bit just so that we get the keyframes and we are gonna set it at point 2 why is that well now we have the animation running the player from well on the right side and also we have the player running on the left side if i hit the play button you see this is what we have right here now don't worry about the animation being that fast we can always always well turn it down a little bit so if i go here inside of the animation this one has 60 if i set it to 12 and if I hit the play button, so yeah, simply change the frames. You have here samples, you see samples are set on 60, which means 60 frames in a second and the player is running like crazy, you see, like a road runner. But we don't want that. Set the samples on 12 because for the run right, samples are also on 12, so the player runs like this. Let me just go back to run left. It's the same exact thing. Now, in regards to the jump left animation, what we need to do. So we need to animate our player jumping, well, from right to left. Before we actually animate our player jumping from right to left, let us select the first three keyframes and put them back like this. So the first one will be at zero, the second two will be at 15 and the second three or the third two keyframes will be at frame 30. The last keyframes can be on frame, well, 60 or the last frame right here because this will make the animation look a little bit better. Now, what we need to do is go on frame 30 and when our player jumps, we are gonna hit here the record button, set the position Y at zero and set the position X at zero so that our player gets here and go on the last frame, set the Y position at negative one and the X position at negative two, because now you see this is that animation of our player jumping. Now our player is very small. You see here, when he jumps, he gets very small. We don't want that. So going here on frame zero, hit the recording button, set the skill at 0.35 for the X and 0.35 for the Y. So Y and X are gonna be 0.35. Do the same thing here for our, well, 
for the last frame. Let me just put it like this and like this. So now I'm going to set it 35, 35. So simply change the number at the last frame so that you get the keyframes and put them back. So the scale is 0.35. Scale Z is not important only X and Y. So notice now when we jump, this is what we have here. So player is jumping. Don't worry about the animation being a little bit slow. We will fix that later on in our code. We can go here in the animator and we have, well, jump left. Let me just see where my animations are. So we have run right, run left. Here it is. Let me just resize the window so that we can see more clearly. Run right and run left and we have jump left and we will have jump right. So if I take it here and put it at 2.5 speed, it will run two times, two and a half times faster, you see, as its original speed. But we can see that in our game. Now this right here is a setup for our player animation because this way it is much easier. We can simply use the jump left animation, the player will jump from right to left and then from here we can continue to play run left animation which is this one right here and when the player jumps from right to left we can continue to play the run right animation which is this one right here this is much more easy or easier than if we had to do all of this from our code now to get this or to paint a clear picture to see how easy this is actually we need to start co coding but we are going to do that from the next video and uh, fire here from awesometudes.com if you missed something in regards to these animations you can rewind the video to see how i animated everything or download the complete project link is in the description below to see how i set things to be animated in the next video we will program our player jumping so that we can jump from our code and we will see how that goes. Until then, fire here from awesometudes.com. I will see you guys in the next video. Before we end this video, don't forget that you can enroll in my most popular course, create your first RPG and first person shooter multiplayer game in Unity. Link is in the description below. And when you enroll in the course, you will also enroll in my giveaway competition and get a chance to win one of my cool prizes. First place will win a 15 inch MacBook Pro. Second place will win iMac 27 inch with 5K Retina display. And third place will win a MacBook Pro 13 inch laptop. Now, all you have to do to enroll in the giveaway and get a chance to win one of these cool computers is enroll in the course. Again, link is in the description below.